Hey guys, I'm going to do a review today. So, right off the bat, this is not, this is not sponsored. Um, I'm going to review my own shoes. I'll be reviewing the Topo Terra Venture 2 trail running shoe. I've been using these since about March. Um, it's now September, so six months or so. They look like this. These are the these are the new ones. Um, I should show you these new ones. Yeah. These are in the olive green. These are brand new, these ones. These are actually the second pair um, of these I've bought. Um, they don't sell these. I don't think they sell these in a shop in New Zealand. At least I couldn't find any where I am. I had to um, check them out when I was on holiday uh, in Canada. And I liked them so much, I've bought another pair. So these ones are untouched. Um, <laughs> these are my actual shoes now. I don't uh, clean my shoes uh, after I go running, I just dry them with a shoe dryer, so they're bone dry, which I find you can brush the dirt off um, and they they tend to last longer than if you scrub them, you know, hose them down or keep them wet or whatever, and they, they don't smell as much if you um, keep them dry. So yeah, these have got 365 kilometers on them, 226 miles, um, so they should hopefully have another couple of hundred K on them. And so far they're wearing pretty well, actually. Um, I'll show you the soles. The soles on these are wearing pretty well. Compare that to the a new one. And uh, that's for, you know, 360 kilometers. It's not too bad, actually. I'm running on clay, gravel. Uh, I don't do like really sharp desert runs or anything like that. Um, the uppers are not wearing quite so well. Um, I'll show you this hole. They both seem to, and my wife have these, has these shoes as well, and they both seem to have got this hole here. It's not worn all the way through yet, but we are through the outer, the first layer, um, which is a little bit worrying. That's probably where they're gonna fail, and looking at this shoe, it seems to have the uh, the same thing going on, and my wife started to wear through there as well. So that's probably where they're gonna wear out first. But I like the fit on them so much, I bought another pair now. Um, the old, the red ones are nine and a half US, but I'm normally a ten in like a ultra lone peak. I'm a size ten. Um, the new greens, I went for a size ten. I tried them. You know, you did the classic thing. You try them on when you're on holiday in the shop, and they feel a little bit too big. Um, so then I uh, bought the nine and a halfs, and they're just a little bit tight on the downhills. I'm finding my my toes hitting the end on them a bit. Um, but I wear a size ten in everything else, so I should have just gone with my gut and bought the size ten. Um, but I didn't. I paid the price. So. They haven't given me blisters or anything, they've got quite a wide toe box on them, which I really like. Uh, so, give you some f facts and figures about them. They are a 25mm in the heel, 22 in the forefoot, so they're a 3mm drop. I came to them from Ultra Lone Peak 4s, which are 25, 25, 0 drop. I love the Lone Peaks, I've had quite a few pairs of them, but uh, this, the problem with them, they're quite sloppy. I love the wide toe box, but they're sloppy fit. It's particularly in the heel, it's like a skater shoe, which is fine if you're running in a straight line, but as soon as you get to technical sections where you're changing direction, they just don't really have a lot of control around the heel. You, I could live with that, I don't do particularly technical trails, but the, the wear on them, they just don't last. I mean, I had a pair 400K, um, which is, what's that, 230, 240 miles, and they were done. They were like absolutely done. Uh, next pair, 460K, so maybe 250, 260 miles, and they were done. And I mean, the thing is, they've worn through, the soles are completely, the outers are completely gone there. Um, but the main thing was that even after like the first two runs, all of the bounce had gone from them. They just felt flat and dead. The first run was amazing, but they just, I really wanted to like Lone Peaks, but I couldn't. I kept buying them because I couldn't find any alternatives. So eventually I found there was another shoe with a white toe box, which was the Topos. So I tried the Topos and I, they're pretty good. They're, I really like them. So I bought some more. So yeah, I've had these for six months or so now that I've been running in. In terms of weights, um, I run in a, a US 10 but the US 9 is 306 grams, which is 10.8 ounces. Females, I think Joe is a size six, maybe a five, but the US women's seven is 8.2 ounces, 232 grams. So in terms of weights, they're very similar to the Lone Peaks, but they, in terms of fit, they're much better. They, um, they have a much better fit in the heel 
section here than the Lone Peaks do. Both of them have the, the lace locking holes, um, but even with the lace locking holes, the Lone Peaks just feel kind of sloppy. There's a bit more rigidity in the heel here, which stops that slight side motion of your heel when you're, you're slipping around on the cornering sections. Um, which I really like, and they do have a wide toe box just like the, the Ultras. If you're looking for a wide toe box, really, I think this is the best brand you can get. I, I really want to like Ultra. And to give you an idea, I have, um, I've had Ultra Lone Peaks. I've still got the Ultra Lone Peak mids, the, the higher cuff version. Uh, I have the Ultra Paradigms, I have the Ultra Torrens. Um, I've had a lot of Ultra shoes, and I've had multiple pairs of them, uh, but... <sighs> I prefer the Topos. I think I'll be going for the Ultrafly, the Road Topo, when my Ultra Paradigms, the Topo Ultrafly, I'll probably get that when my Ultra Paradigms finally wear out. The Ultra Paradigms are actually wearing a lot better than the Ultra Lone Peaks, but I think it might just be because they're maximal. It just has a lot more cushion to wear through, even if it's lost some of that bounce. Um, so they're doing much better. But yeah, if you're a, a Ultra Lone Peak user, try this Topo Terra Venture too. They're, they're really good. I, in terms of the um, uppers, other than the wear um, issue, I was worried about um, this. If you can see this mesh here, it looks like a dirt magnet, but it's not been too bad. I mean, I let them dry first and then I brush them and they're pretty easy to, dry, uh, to brush off actually. I was expecting it to be just a nightmare to get dirt out of them, but it's, it's not been too bad. They do have a rock plate, uh, which is the main reason I went for them over the Topo Ultra Venture, which is their shoe designed for more long distances. I like to run long distance, so I thought that would be the one, but on the local trails around here, there's a lot of rocks and the rock plate um, is something I really wanted. The Lone Peak has a rock plate as well, and it's something I appreciate. Yeah, you don't you don't get jabbed in the feet by any rocks wearing these. They do fit true to size, so I'm a bit of an idiot for buying the nine and a half. I should have known to go with the tens, but I didn't trust my gut. They do have gator hooks here, but they fit Topo's proprietary gators, which I don't own. I I do have gators, but they're Solomon ones, and uh, I don't use them very much, to be honest. I prefer to just, you know, let it all get in, take my shoe off and tip it out, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, so they, they have three mil less cushion in the forefoot than the Lone Peaks do, but I find that it, it tends to last longer in terms of the actual bounce you, you feel because the Lone Peaks go flat so fast. So I prefer these in terms of bounce and cushion and rebound. They might be a little bit too wide if you have narrow feet, but I have quite wide feet. So some of the brands like um, La Sportiva, Solomon, uh, Hoka Oneone, I, I, I've never found one of their shoes that fit me not even close. I put them on and straight away, you know, the person in the shop will say, try this, and I put it on and it immediately doesn't fit me. So, you know, I've been just a die-hard Ultra fan, but I do find myself changing over to Topo. I will probably be trying the Topo Ultrafly in the future. So, yeah. Um, in terms of negatives, not many. The upper wears a bit fast, particularly on the outer section here. The sh laces are crazy short crazy short, particularly if you use lace locking systems, so you go back in and through, um, you actually have to use quite a short lace lock, you can't do it right to the center because, you know, your tiny little fingers to tie them, they are, they are very short laces. <laughs> um, I thought they, the Lone Peak had short laces, but these are even shorter. Um, reality is though, you get used to it and um, it's not it's not too bad in the long run. Uh, I do use my stride power meter with these and it fits on there just nice, it doesn't bang into your foot as you're bending it or anything. So yeah, I mean that sums it up. If you're a Lone Peak user, I would highly advise at least trying out the Topo Terra Venture 2. Uh, it's a great shoe. It's a great shoe and I'm on my, soon to be on my second pair. Hopefully I will get a good couple of hundred more kilometers out of my red pair um, and then I'll move on to these green ones. Try them out.